It's time now for the Sports Objective Podcast. No talking heads, just guys who love sports. Here's Dave Richmond. What an honor. This is a uh, guest we've wanted to have on for a long, long time. And right now we have with us from the 1983 team, as we've been doing over the last few weeks, we've been looking back at arguably the best team ever uh, to lace up those uh, shoes, the cleats, and get out there, of course, under Coach Ed Emery. And, man, this is a big one, right, Bubba? We've got uh, you on the line right now. Yeah, no doubt, Dave. That's what we're very excited to catch up with ECU Hall of Fame running back, Ernest Biner. Ernest, welcome into the Sports Objective Podcast. Hey, 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 how's it going? Great, Ernest. Thank you so much uh, for being on. In fact, uh, we uh, like to talk. We've had a couple podcasts already. I don't know if you've heard some of your former teammates have uh, have really been amazing and I guess that's what's uh, made this team special. But can you tell folks uh, how you came to Greenville under Coach Ed Emery uh, to play for the Pirates? Mm, absolutely. You know, first of all, you know, playing on on the on that team and and going through the process of development um, was uh, was really was really special. I mean, we can get into some of the uh, methodolo- methodologies that uh, Coach Emery. Uh, exercise and the type of in the type of ways he he uh, helped us to develop into uh, the t- the type of team and the type of young men that that we developed into. But um, Coach Emery was at Georgia Tech before he came uh, to EC, and uh, I visited Georgia Tech because a coach uh, in Macon, Georgia, because you know I'm from Millersville, Georgia, and we used to play against Central, Southwest, and Northeast over in Macon, Georgia. Had no business plan against him because he was waxing our ass. So it was just, they were, we, were, we were, you know, we were uh, in a class. We were in 4A, and we had no business being in 4A, but we played against them. But um, uh, as the, the coach at Northeast, uh, I had a, you know, had, had one, of, one, one of the all-time games against them, uh, recommended me to – Coach Emery uh, at Georgia Tech, uh, and Coach Emery brought me up. Um, you know, they they you know showed me around. You know, got a chance to spend a little time with him. But then uh, shortly thereafter, he got the job at at uh, at, at, EC, at EC, and uh, I, you know he called me up, invited me uh, invited me up there to uh, to visit uh, right on the spot. I mean, as soon as I got to his hotel room. In fact, he, he hadn't even, hadn't even gotten into his office yet. He was he was operating out of a uh, out, of, out of a hotel room, and uh, he offered me offered me a scholarship. And you know, I told him initially that I had to go back home and you know talk to Granny, and uh, you know you know and you know involve involve her in the the, the decision making process. But you know, I knew right then I, I could tell right then that I was going to be an East Carolina Pirate. There was a few guys from Georgia uh, that came during that time uh, with that Emory. Uh, what do you remember about some of your uh, some of your teammates, your fellow Georgian teammates, uh, guys like Terry Gallagher? I mean, guys, as when when we, it's hard for me to remember guys. I, I can I can tell you that. Um, I don't know how you can forget you know. Terry Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible with it. I'm terrible, man. I'm telling you. Um, I and, and you know a lot of people don't know this, um, you know, but uh, you know I, I deal with the concussion stuff. Um, I okay. have some some of the you know I, I just I lose I lose I lose people I lose people's names. I can you know like if I see someone I can remember you know remember faces, but I, I just. You know, and some of the experiences. Ernest, Ernest, my fault, my friend. That was my fault. Uh, <laughs> Gallagher, I'm getting my teams confused. I remember I'm 38 years old. Gallagher, I graduated in 78. He just needed to finish the team, not the 83 team. Okay. So it's no wonder he doesn't remember that. <laughs> well, so thank you. They're all pirates. He is from Georgia. And he is from Georgia. <laughs> well, well. 
you know, well, you helped me out a little bit on that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a reality, though. You know, I do Make deal with it, but questions. but I, you know, I I I, I yeah, appreciate it, it, I appreciate well, you Papa, coming clean. Father, you, you you and you and David just just sit there and don't say a word. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> not not nothing. And now, you know, they 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 see, they they see me struggling. Hey, if it's, uh, if, it's any, if it's any consolation, E.B., that's what I, I sent text, sent Kyle a text and, and told him what he just said. I was like, yeah, well, I, I can, right. make, I can make, make the man think he's losing his mind. Totally. I already know I'm losing it. He, he said, Terry Gallagher. He said, who's Terry Gallagher? <laughs> well, let, me, let me explain further. Let me explain totally further. We, 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 did, we did two podcasts recently. <laughs> honoring the, the 83 team with several of your teammates. But back in December, we did a podcast party honoring the 78 Independence Bowl team. Oh, and I was, yeah. I was just <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was born in 1980. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. I'm just wondering right. if he's had some concussions. Uh, there, or, or... <laughs> Man, oh, you did... uh, how you even play football? Did you – Fall down walking down the street. <laughs> they drop, well, you know. You know, they used, to say, they used to say about me, they dropped me as a baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, uh, we went for a wrestling earnest. He, uh, he, maybe somebody drop kicked him. I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe some chair shots. Maybe some chair <laughs> How about this one? How about this one? Uh, maybe a guy you will remember. What, what are your memories of Henry Gizmo Williams? Henry was uh, was a roommate of mine. Um, oh, wow. Well. fact, yeah. We uh first part of uh his stint down there, uh like the first semester, uh, you know, we were we actually, you know, shared you know, shared you know, shared uh shared the room. So uh got to know Henry some. Uh Henry was one of those guys that was uh was special. I mean, his talents uh and his ability to, to break a game open um, to me, was unmatched as far as uh, you know uh, during that time, and uh, and the and the teams that we were playing, Henry had the you know the the uncanny ability to 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 make those returns come to you know come together, and that patented flip at the end was uh, was 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 remarkable. I mean, uh, and, and there was a thing about uh, uh, about Hunt that he was. Um, a comedian. A lot of people. I don't know if y'all know this, but he was. I mean, he kept it light, kept it, kept us laughing, knew how to joke, knew how to, to tell jokes on people. Uh, I mean, he was. Uh, he 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 was a classic, uh, classic guy and a, and a and a great teammate. Yeah, well, I guess it was just the size that kept him from playing in the NFL. But he's a, he's a legend up in Canada. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Now, if he'd have came along nowadays. He'd be one of those. He'd be one of those guys, uh, like uh, uh, the little little running back number twenty nine for Chicago. Uh, you know, Tyreek. I think his name is Tariq. Um, he'd be he'd be one of those guys. I mean, be able to play in the slot. You know, they find find ways to get him a jet sweep. You know, that, you know that 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 type of thing. But I mean, uh, Hump. He he. He went up to Canada, man. He he made it. He made. It, you know, I mean, he. But he knew he could play ball. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you know he he took that opportunity up there, and I think he, I mean, it, it literally, literally ran with it. Yep. Something earnest that really stands out during your time at ECU. You obviously had several excellent running backs uh, on that team, in addition to yourself, with the likes of Tony yeah. Baker, Jimmy Walden. And I yeah. think your your freshman year, Tony Collins was still around. Yeah, Tony I'm Collins, uh, Harold. Harold Blue, uh, we had another guy we called Frog. I can't remember his name right now. Uh, built, he was real built. He was a real solid. I can't remember. I can't remember his name now. But Harold Blue was one of those guys. Um, being able to crack that lineup. I'm sorry. I don't know you. Uh, you, you uh, I'm, I'm probably, probably precluding your question, but um, uh, getting a chance to actually crack that lineup. As a yeah, as a rookie, I mean, I, you know, every now and again, I would get in the huddle, and and the and the other seniors would would look at me, 
like, what are you doing in here? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was, it was a, a you know, that kind of had to, had to break through that barrier because they, those guys had been together, I think three or four years already. And they, you know, obviously, you know, obviously you stake your claim on the position, you know, and, and this freshman is coming in and he's going to get player time. I mean, I just, I, I I grew a lot because those guys provided that the, uh, a, a atmosphere for me to compete, but also to to become accepted as part of a, 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 a kind of a, a, a an elite um, class of running backs. No, no doubt, and uh, the point I was um, actually going to make is just. It's just how uh, you obviously had excellent numbers. You ran for over 2,000 yards in your Pirate career, but the numbers aren't what some might think that they would be. And just the nature of the option offense, which we ran, and, and sharing the football and sharing those carries around, uh, so mm-hmm. spread, spreading those carries out. Uh, mm-hmm. Because um, a lot of people would think of running back as yourself. They would probably thought you had 3,500 yards or something in your Pirate career, but. Yeah. Well, see, a lot of people don't know. Also, uh, we had the wishbone. We started off with the wishbone. That was the, the offense that we ran. Uh, Snake was the quarterback. Um, then uh, uh, Kevin Ingram came in, and Coach Beckett actually uh, was a new offense coordinator. And we went to what we call the trap eye. And I I played the fullback position as opposed to playing the tailback position. So I, because they, they needed, they, they wanted a, a guy like me that could go in there and could find those holes, could run the trap. Uh, but also, uh, you know, I could block. I, I mean, that, that was one of the things that the wishbone gave me the ability to develop and which actually helped me later in my career when I got to, to, to Cleveland and then to Washington, it helped me to be able to play the fullback position because I had to block as a wishbone, um, a wishbone runner. I had to be, you know, I had to be some lead, uh, do some lead blocking and stuff. So uh, when we ran, when we ran the trap eye, as opposed to me being the tailback, I was a fullback, so I didn't get to get a chance to run the ball uh, nearly as much from the tailback position uh, as uh, as you know as. Well, as needed. I mean, I, I I played played the positions that uh, that the coaches asked me to play, and that may may have dictated some of the 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 lack of yards because because of that. And also, I, you know, sometimes I got a chance. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. I got a chance to drop back to the like when when the uh, when they, maybe they got tired or you know something happened, and they would drop me back to the tailback position and put uh, Reggie Branch. And as the fullback, and then that's that's how we were we were able to 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 make some some additional plays. So it was a it was a it was a it was a gift to go to, from the wishbone to the trap eye, and then to be able to to be developed the way uh, the way that that my game ended up being developed. How how good of a recruiter was Ed Emery? When you look at that '83 team, uh, yeah, Bubba, help me out with this. Um, we were talking about this the other night on, on, on the podcast with uh, like some of your teammates about how many guys were drafted off the '83 team. How many was there? Were, do you remember? As far as the draftees, I don't recall exactly. I know there were something like thirteen or fourteen that went on to to play, play in the NFL. Ball. Yeah, or professional ball. And so, yeah, it was it was remarkable the talent that was on that '83 team. How, how was yeah. Ed able to recruit like that in East Carolina? Did, did he have a a philosophy he was recruiting with his, his assistant coaches was he just good yeah. at scouting talent? Uh, you know what I think the, the scouting the talent uh, obviously is uh, you know one of the first things that you have to have, and uh, I think the other thing that you have to have is the ability to sell sell first of all yourself, and then uh, and then sell the program. Um, I think Coach Emery is was one of the masters uh, of uh, you know of recruiting. Uh, you know, he, he and Nancy, they knew how to, you know, they knew how to, uh, get you over to the house and smooth, you know, smooth you a little bit and, 
you know, get you, you know, get you to, you know, get you to come on in. I mean, he, I mean, going to get Terry Long, Jeff Pegues, um, going to get Kevin Ingram, you know, when, when uh, Villanova, you know, lost their team, going to get a couple of guys. Uh, there's one of the milk choice is, uh, you know, being able to go to the junior colleges and get guys to, to come in and buy into the program as well. Uh, Coach Emery, uh, I mean, he had a way. Um, I mean, <laughs> After he got you there, boy, I tell you, <laughs> you talking about you talking about some hard work. I mean, we we practiced four times a day for for a week. Then we went down to three, um, then the two. Um, that old tobacco barn that we worked out in, um, you know, throwing those weights around, you know, doing those Olympic style lifting. I mean, the way we worked, the way he developed us. I mean, from our freshman year to the senior year, um, uh, you know, '83 and '84, man, we we became relevant uh, in the in the game of football and in the, in the NCAs, you know, for yeah. what we for what we did. Talking about becoming relevant, you, you had the close calls against Florida State, Miami, and Florida that year. All three of those games, you had a chance to win. The only three losses in the '83 season. Uh, what do you, what do you, if you had to pick out uh, a game from that year, would it be one of those close losses to the Florida schools, or would it be the win over Missouri, the win over NC State, or does it all just kind of blur together? I can tell you this: the win over NC State was probably as sweet as uh, as any, uh, with the way the way it happened. Um, you guys came came. Everybody always talks about that '91 Peach Bowl where the guys came from behind, but you guys were down pretty. A pretty good margin at the, at the, in the third quarter, or maybe even the start of the fourth quarter, weren't you? Yeah, it didn't. I can tell you this: it didn't seem like we were going to pull it out. Um, and and for you know, from a miracle, I mean, it was like one of the one of those miracles. And that energy after win, I mean, winning that game, feeling that energy of that stadium, you know, the excitement that you know that that was involved with it. Was uh, was really really remarkable. I think the other game, uh, you know, the Missouri game, going out there and seeing those signs, uh, they were, they, you know, that uh, we were when we were riding in on the bus, they were like, there was some, it was a sign. I remember where in Carolina is East Carolina. Yeah, uh, but after that game. They knew where East Carolina came from. That's funny you they bring that. To, funny you bring have that to up. Show us respect. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No problem. Mm-hmm. It's funny you bring that up. We've actually talked about that on the two previous volumes of our 83 roundtable. Uh, your your teammates were addressing the where in the H E double L is, is East Carolina. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean that. You know, seeing that it was. Uh, you know, to, you know for. I don't know how much it motivated us, but it was noticed, and I, I don't know why it was. It, it stood. It just and, and it and it was, you know, it's, it's one of those. It's like moments in your life where a snapshot is taken. I mean, a mental snapshot. That was one of those moments for you know for me. Um, I can tell you the, the other game that. <laughs> I'm going to say this, man. Florida State and Florida, they cheated us. Yeah. Both of those games, we got cheated. There's no way we should have lost those games. I mean, I, I, when we had Florida State open the game, uh, obviously, you know, they, they're thinking that, you know, we're going to walk away, you know, with this. I mean, we got East Carolina, a little unknown team. Yeah, but we went in there and we we balled. We we were I mean you talk about I mean we we hear about now when they say undaunted you talk about being undaunted we had we we were battle tested because I can remember I can tell you that I I can remember my rookie year and playing against um, Southern Miss no I'm sorry playing against Miami not as I say my rookie year my freshman year <laughs> my freshman year because <laughs> I was a rookie but. But we played, and it, and it was like I went to hit a guy, and he knocked me down like I was a little boy, like a, like a little boy. He'd say, hey, man, going back to the home. 
I jumped up and looked at it and went back to the huddle and I came back the next play. But the thing is, after the, the year after that, the year after that, we grew into men and that we grew into guys that they had to be they had to be worried about. You weren't gonna knock us around like little kids anymore. We we here as 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 men, as men as football players. And that that was one of the things that really that, that that coach coach Emery did for us. He developed us into players that could 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 play with anybody in the next in, in, in the uh, in the NCAA in the NCAA's. You mentioned uh, Coach Emery's wife Nancy earlier when you were talking about recruiting. You, it's funny you're not the first guy to have mentioned uh, uh, Coach Emery's wife Nancy in the recruiting process. Uh, what, what are your memories of her? I mean, she, she, that's something we haven't really got into with any of the other guys, and they have mentioned her. What are your memories of, of Nancy and, uh, and and her being kind of, I guess, the team mom? Absolutely. Uh, that that that's exactly what uh, what she was. Uh, beautiful lady, high energy, always had a smile, always nicely tanned. Uh, that just just would would do anything for the program. I mean, I can remember going over to their house, um, having dinner, you know, and Nancy was the butterfly. Just she would go and just be around, be around shaking, uh, shaking people's hands, smiling, uh, calling you by name. I mean, it was uh, Coach Emery couldn't have had a better partner for him as far as the recruiting process and how she mothered us and how how and how it made us feel like we were at, we were always at home when we were in in their house that's awesome you probably don't get that kind of relationship now i don't know that but i would imagine with the way things are now with with recruiting and and, and the ncaa i don't know if it's even possible for players to have that kind of relationship with a coach and, and, and their spouse uh like that anymore yeah yeah it it, uh, it probably Probably it'd be uh, you know a little bit difficult for them to to really have that type of relationship, but I mean it's a it, you know it's a relationship business and they they took it and made it in such a way that uh, we we felt like we were at home whenever we were at, we were at the house. Yeah. Um, I wanted to fast forward a little bit when we were uh, coaching. Uh, running backs coach for the Titans. Uh, you had a chance to coach a fellow pirate in Chris Johnson. Uh, mm-hmm. What What are your memories of coaching Chris? And uh, how was it? You know, be, be, being a uh, legendary pirate running back coaching another legendary pirate running back. I was mad. He broke my records, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, no, uh, when I got to Tennessee, um, it was kind of late in the process, and one of the first guys that I was shown uh, by actually um, was Rob, uh, Rob Robinson, Rob, I can't think of Rob's name. He was a DB coach, and he actually wanted me to look at Chris Johnson. He was one of the first guys that I that I actually looked, looked at. And uh, I saw right away that, you know, Chris had the, you know, potential. I mean, his size was a little bit, you know, a little bit, um, um, I mean, of an alert, but um, the explosion he had, the, the the run technique that he had, okay, and 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 we, it was just it was a no brainer for us. Um, being able to go from practice to the game, I mean, because I can remember showing him a run technique or a move in the open field, and I I would show I showed I showed CJ the move on a Wednesday, and on that Sunday, I was seeing it, and it was amazing how his mind could take the things that that we had talked about in practice, and take it to the game so quickly. So it, it was a it was a it was he he was a gifted person athletically, but his mind was the thing that really helped him. To 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 be the type of player that he became and, and was in the National Football League. And you talk about it being a no brainer. That's what 
and it definitely paid off. I think he's he's either second or third. I believe he's third all time in that organization, the Houston Oilers slash Tennessee Titans organization yeah. in rushing yards behind Eddie George and I believe it's Earl, Earl Campbell, maybe. Yeah. Oh so, man, Earl yeah. Campbell is amazing. Oh my gosh. Yes, sir. As a kid, yes, sir. I mean, um, Ernest, I wanted to go back to the days of uh, your time with the Washington Redskins. One of my all-time favorite football coaches is uh, Coach Joe Gibbs. Can you talk about uh, playing for him? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Coach Gibbs to me, when I when I got to the Redskins, they had already been to two, maybe maybe three. I think uh, when we went, it was their the fourth Super Bowl. So by the time I I got there, um, you know when when I was when I was traded, I was first of all looked upon as more of a of an eight back uh, for them as opposed to being the the runner. Uh, and when the runner you know, when the runner was Gerald Gerald Riggs that was drafted. I mean, I'm sorry, traded right. on the same day that I was traded. Um, Going there, it was almost like, to me, the, Coach Gills was like the the a, 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 a enigma, like a, a god type of figure, because I mean he was he had that that air about him that you know was cool, was collected. He knew what he, he knew what he wanted. He and he knew what he wanted you to do. So I looked at him, I, I mean, almost like he was uh, almost un, un, untouchable um, as, far as, I, as far as I was concerned. Eventually, I got to, um, I, I started, you know, had some success and, you know, he, you know, he was starting to, you know, getting the thing, got a feel for me, got an understanding about you know, some of the things I could do. Uh, but then Gerald kept getting hurt. And, uh, I kept kind of stepping in, and one day um, it was getting toward the latter part of the year. Um, we um, we were almost out of the playoff race, and for some reason, I mean, I had I, I went through a spiritual conversion, became a Christian there. You know, he was a big Christian man. Uh, that team had a, a Christian um, a foundation. So you know, I became had, had become a Christian. So I, I I got the energy up to go talk to him the the night before a game, <laughs> and I was like, Coach Gills, man, I really I really feel good about myself. I feel good with you know where I am, and I, I like for you to put the load on on my shoulders. I like to be able to to take the load. He listened to me. And the next four games, he ran me like thirty sometimes a game. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so him being approachable uh, in that way uh, was something I really, I really respected uh, of Coach Gibbs. And you know, obviously, he had a feel about what he wanted, what he wanted to do, and how he wanted to run his offense. But you know, he was uh, he was a man of, of great faith and a man that uh, that really kind of went with his gut feeling and. When he had that that gut feeling about me, he 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 he, he gave it to me and uh, allowed me to to perform at a level to to help us eventually win you know win a Super Bowl. You know, Ernest here recently, Kyle and I were discussing uh, how ECU players down through the years they have the knack of getting drafted late or signing as free agents and then having excellent NFL careers. You, you were from that mold. You were drafted in the tenth round. And earlier you alluded to your versatility and how playing both fullback and tailback at ECU would prepped you for your NFL career. Um, you, you had, what, more than 8,000 career yards over your 14-year career. But then one of the things that really jumped out to me is how you caught more than 500 passes for, for more than 4,600 yards. So talk about yeah. that. talk about that process and uh, going from – being a low draft pick to to the stellar career that you had, yeah, it was uh, it was something about um, the development process, you know, through East Carolina, um, seeing you know going through having to try to fight my way into the uh, the huddle 
with the uh, with the seniors my my freshman year, seeing them going on to to become pros, um, get you know get tryouts. You know, AC went on to have a a nice career with New England. I believe they play. I believe he played in the Super Bowl, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I was talking about Anthony Collins, um, and going through the additional development process gave me the confidence uh, that I could that I could play in the National Football League. I, I just my 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 sole reason. I'll, I'll tell you this: my sole reason. But going to college was to become a coach. I knew that I was going to be a coach. I knew that when I was I was told that by the Spirit when I was about eight nine years old. And every after that experience, everything that I did going to high school, going to East Carolina, was to become a coach. I even you know they call it kinesiology, but it was PE. It was a, it was a, it was like PE. You majored in PE back then. Now it's kinesiology, it's a big old fancy name, but you know I mean? they're, 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 it means a coach to me. That's that's why I went to school. But I, I wasn't thinking about being a pro. But after I went through that process of development, and I just knew for some reason I, it, it was in me, and I told my agent this that all I need is an opportunity. You know, first of all, I wanted to get drafted because I was married and had, had my first daughter, Samiria, at that time. So I wanted a signing bonus. So I wanted to get drafted so I can get a signing bonus. So I got drafted, but I ended up getting drafted by the Browns. Um, you know, the first day up there, I just felt like I belonged. It, it was, it was, it was, it was really, you know, the transition process wasn't long for me, and and it wasn't too long into training camp that the game slowed down. Because you know it's the game is faster when you get when you go from high school to college, and then college to pro, the game gets faster at each level, and some people can catch up, some people you know, some people can't, and I for some reason it was a scrimmage in the maybe like the second or third week of training camp where the game I mean it was everything was just flying by me I couldn't see nothing. I mean, players going. I mean, it's just, it's all of a sudden, poof! It just slowed down. The game slowed down, and I could see. And once that happened, it was, it was after that. It was really just about development. What um, you had a chance to to, to play uh, in the Super Bowl with the with Super Bowls coming up this week. You had a chance to play in the Super Bowl. Yeah. What are, what are your memories of playing in the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl? Well, um, first I'll tell you about winning it. And I, it's scoring the touchdown um, in the game, starting the game, um, and getting the ball, the first play of the game, well, our first play of the game, was ridiculously nuts. Ridiculous. Because I couldn't hear anything. And when they handed me the ball, it looked like the whole Buffalo Bills defense was all was on was on my ass. <laughs> so I was like so I got swamped in, man, then and then I I jumped up and the thought was, You're playing in the Super Bowl. Hey, let's go. And right after that Again, that was one of those things where the game slowed down again, and I just started to have fun. Got focused. I was able to, you know, make you know make some good blocks, catch some balls, make some good runs, score that touchdown. And then after him, man, that I mean, you, you you're talking about a a, a joy. Uh, it was uh, it was remarkable being able to be in the locker room. Be up on the stage with uh, with Mark Rippon and Coach Gibbs, having you know having that trophy in hand. Uh, you're talking about something that uh, that's that's. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell you how special it is because you just you know when you're going through it at the moment, you just kind of just it's kind of floating. 
And uh, I think that excitement, man, is really um, is, is really something that you can you can never really replace, but you always want it again. And that's the only thing that came to us is that you try to get back again. But reality, man, getting that win, I mean, it was a it was it was a joy to go through the process of development with that team, especially with the way we got there. Because we won like ten games in a row to start the season, and then we kind of I mean we kind of fell off a little bit. We lost one, and then we started winning again. Then we lost the last game because we didn't play everybody. Um, but that that ride, that whole ride, was really like a dream. I mean, it was like a. I mean, that winning those ten games, getting to. I mean, it was almost like it was just. It was almost meant for us to just just ride on, ride on, ride that wave of energy into the game. What, what is it like coming back from that and getting back to 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 DC? I mean. Being, being a Super Bowl champion, I imagine everybody, all the players, I mean, I imagine everybody in the whole D.C. Metroplex just loved you guys, and everybody kind of just want a piece of you and want to be around you. I mean, what was it like, just people wanting to be a part of that? Well, I can tell you this. Um, it, it was really, really nice uh, ultimately getting back to D.C., but I didn't go back to D.C. right away. Um, the, you know, that was the times where, it was uh, the Pro Bowl was after oh, okay. the Super Bowl, and so I missed the parade. I didn't, wow. I, I didn't, didn't have a chance to even, even uh, be uh, be a part of the the parade. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change going to the Pro Bowl because that was, I think it was my second year. I think that was my second year going to the Pro Bowl. Uh, it was in Hawaii. <laughs> we, we went to Hawaii, baby. You know, so yeah. So we went over there and uh, you know had a, had a week, uh, had a nice week over there. But I missed it. I missed the parade and uh, and all the other festivities. Going to the uh, uh, White House uh, was not was, was something that was done. I, it was almost. I guess it was almost immediate. It wasn't like you got your Super Bowl ring and then later on you went to the to the White House like they do it now. Um, you know, right now, I mean, it's, it, 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 you know, it's obviously being different back, back then. So uh, I really didn't get a chance to enjoy the uh, the parade. But I can tell you that energy of the city and for, you know, winning the, winning the championship, nothing, you know, it was, uh, it's, it's hard to match that. So, Ernest, you talked about how you really felt like it was your, your calling to be a coach, and uh, you, you went on to coach 16 years in the league after your 14-year playing career, and you coached, I think, with five different organizations. I know the your uh, last one, excuse me, was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I think you, uh, you were actually going into Tampa as former East Carolina head coach and Hall of Famer Steve Logan was on his way out after that 2011 season. You were there in 12 and 13, correct? Mhm. Mhm. Yep. So that was something that kind of stood out to me that pirate fans could appreciate and uh Yeah, yeah. And and then uh, no, and, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, you go ahead. No, I think I got a chance. I I I I met Logan down there, I believe. Um I don't know, was was he with Gruden a little bit? Was it was he did, did I he believe get some he, of Gruden? I don't I don't think he was ever with Gruden. I think uh, what was the guy's name that followed up Gruden? Gosh, I, mean, I think he followed. Uh, I I can't recall his name, but uh, but I believe Logan was. I I'm, I, I seen Logan down there uh, at one point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was kind of kind of freaky, you know, having you know having that connection again, seeing uh, seeing him being from EC and me being from EC as well. Right. And um, so bring our listeners up to date. I mean, I know uh, you, you wrote an excellent book. I have a copy, Everybody Fumbles, um, chronicling, the, of course, the, the fumble in the 87 AFC title game against the Broncos. Um, yeah. A, a game, and I mean, you had a tremendous ball game. I, I talked about your ability as a receiver out of the backfield. I think you had like 120 yards receiving that game. But yeah. – uh, but just talk about that book. You know, we wanted you to plug it. I think when it okay. came out back in 2014. 
Yeah, uh, that was a, it was a book that I really wrote. I wrote the book probably over over 20 years because what, what the book is, is a collection of experiences that I had throughout my, you know, throughout my uh, playing career. Young, when I was young, I got stories in there about, you know, when I was a kid. You know how I got into uh, how I got into football, um, and it's about fifty, maybe fifty three short stories. You know about development. You know, and, and 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 part of that development was you know from my perspective, but also from from other people's perspective. I mean, I talked about Art Monk and how I learned from him, um, and uh, I you know talk about a thing called football plagiarism, where I watched. Marcus Allen um, do a certain certain technique and stole it from him and used it myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so you know, I try to encourage people to to learn from other people. You don't have to necessarily learn from their mistakes. You can learn from some of the things that are good experiences, uh, and you and 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 you can take different little nuggets from uh you know from from almost anybody's story so my my gift has been able to share that you know and i think that's part of as an extension of my my coaching and giving back to people because you know if you at, at different points in that book you might find something that would be relevant uh to your life not just athletic life but life in general, and that's one of the thing, That's one of the good things about the game of football or sports in general, because they have so many cross references for life and the games that are being played. And so, everybody fumbles is one of those books that you know has those references about athletic a- athletics or football. But it has uh, those 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 the, a way of reaching across the 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 the, the 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 chasm that's between football and life, and and bring those things together. It's a bridge, so to speak. So everybody fumbles is for for anybody and everybody that's looking to to develop, or you just want to read you know, some good stories about you know about the game, but also about development. And, and where can people where can people find that book if they want to buy it, Ernest? They can get it on uh, in, on my website, um, Ernest Ernest Byron twenty one dot com. Um, if they want to follow me, if they want to, they 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 can go to my Twitter handle. I have it uh, on my Twitter handle. It's one is pinned, uh, and my Twitter handle is at e Byner. That's at e b y n e r. Um, and but um, and and the link there will take you to my website uh, or you can just go straight to my website. Now, the other way you can order it and, and I, I, I hesitate to say this cause I, I'd rather even buy it through my website, but Amazon, if you, if you got something set up with Amazon, it's on Amazon as well. Don't pay $33. Don't pay 30 you know, cause they wow. got something on Amazon prime where they're selling it for $33. Oh wow. Do not pay $33. And how much go, is it for your website? Go through, through my website is nineteen plus shipping. There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, I mean, they that that's how they can get it. They they want to look at my Twitter handle, uh, or my or my website. Uh, either one, they can uh, they can find the book. And Ernest, uh, finally, before we let you go, what do we have to do to get you? Maybe Cal can get some of his boys to go to Canton, or what do we have to do to get you in the? the Hall of Fame. I've been saying it for a number of years, and I know that you're on the ballot again this year, and uh, we want you really hard. We're going to pull hard for you. And right. I've even made a pact with Bubba and Kyle. We're going to make a road trip, and we'll get with the folks in Canton. When you get in, we're going to do a special live podcast if they'll allow us to do it there in Canton for you. That no, sounds good. Sounds good. I think the the thing that you keep doing is right, right in to, uh, to the people uh, in, in, uh, at the Hall of Fame because uh, that, you know, that keeps it going um you write a letter recommending that uh that I, that I be inducted into the Hall of Fame that starts the process and then 
just uh, just keep praying, keep praying that uh, that they see the 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 fact that I mean, then this, I'm, I'm I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I, it, it's not. I don't think it's any other running back or football player that was able to play the number of positions that I played played at the level that I played them. I mean, play play H back, running back, full back, receiver. Um, be able to, you know, grind up on the wing and block defensive linemen, block Lawrence. I mean, I, I don't think you can find a a football player that could play the different positions. I, I guarantee you can't find find a linebacker that could have played defensive end or uh, safety. You know, like I played the different positions on on offense and and still have good numbers. I mean, man, right. I, I, I mean that to me, that's the biggest argument for. I mean, a lot of people look at my stats and say, "Well, he didn't get all the all pro. This he didn't, he didn't. You know, he he averaged three point nine years. You know, he don't have the yards that. Does. I mean, no, I don't. No, I, I agree. But in reality, if you look at football players, if you look at it from that perspective. I don't think you'll find many many football players as versatile and as and 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 could play on the level uh, that I that I played on in the National Football League. Uh, well, get, you know, year in the year out. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Ernest. I thought you were finished. I was just going to simply say we're going to keep praying hard for you, and I know that's going to happen. I know that you're going to be in there, and when it does, I've never made the trip to Canton, uh, but I definitely can tell you I've been around it. But I'm All not right. going to the Hall of Fame. I'm not going in until they put you in. I'll put it All right. Later. All right. Sounds good. Hey, I do do this now. When when uh, when we when we get voted in, now uh, you you got my phone number. We can do a podcast from up there. We're gonna do that's it. Good. I promise you. That's that is a. I've been saying that for a number of years, even before we had the podcast. So I'm gonna keep my word with you. It's been. You're one of those players, or a lot of people I've talked to that have said. They thought you were already in. <laughs> you're so talented, so we're going to make sure that it's a done deal for sure. And I want to thank you. You gave us a lot of time, but more than we expected. And you're a, a true gentleman and class act. And I appreciate all you did for Pirate Nation, for football and the NFL, and certainly coaching. And now I know you're doing motivational speaking. You got the book. Yeah. And I appreciate you, man, for everything. It's uh, it's an honor to have you on the Sports Objective. Uh, thank you all for having me on as well, man. Uh, anytime you need me. Just reach out, okay? We definitely will. All right, have a good, have a good night. All right, you too. Yes, sir. Thanks, All right. Ernest. All right, bye-bye. bye-bye. You've been listening to the Sports Objective Podcast. Join us next time as the guys will be objective, and the objective is sports.